The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has an amazing mechanic within the game that allows just enough variety in the gameplay to have gamers coming back for more. What is this mechanic? The ability to travel through time. Link is able to travel through time forward and backward seven long years by pulling out and returning the Master Sword to and from the pedestal of time. The reason this happens, though, is because in the present, Link is too young to wield the Master Sword and claim the title Hero of Time. Because of this, Link is sealed in the Sacred Realm and falls into a sleep for seven long years to be old enough to claim his title. Link can also reverse this aging process by returning the Master Sword to the Pedestal of Time. Once he does, Link travels back in time by seven long years once again and reverts back to his child self. Now, why is this relevant? Because, well, in The Wind Waker, after proving himself worthy in the Tower of the Gods, Link retrieves the Master Sword from a pedestal resting in the basement of Hyrule Castle, but doesn't have to age despite being a child like Ocarina of Time Link did. Why is this the case? My name is Hylian Luke, and today we are going to be discussing why Link from Ocarina of Time had to age to wield the Master Sword, whereas other Links from other games didn't. Please keep in mind, this video has spoilers for various Zelda games. With that, let's end this rather long introduction and finally jump into the video. Let's start, or rather continue off of, The Wind Waker. As I said before, Link pulls out the Master Sword in the basement of Hyrule Castle. The direct reason Link does not age in order to be able to wield the Master Sword is because he withdrew the Master Sword from the basement of Hyrule Castle. The Wind Waker takes place in the adult timeline, within the timeline of the Zelda series, and in the adult timeline, Hyrule Castle along with Hyrule Castle Town was completely destroyed due to Ganondorf's reign over the kingdom. However, one building within Hyrule Castle Town was never destroyed, and that building is the Temple of Time. The Temple of Time was a main area in Ocarina of Time, as Link used this special location to travel back and forth through time to aid in his adventure to save Hyrule. At the end of Ocarina of Time, Zelda uses the Ocarina to send Link back to before he withdrew the Master Sword for the first time to live the life he lost from becoming the hero. When Link reverts back to the present, as a child, we see the Master Sword returned to the Pedestal of Time to rest once more. However, despite this, we never do see what happened to the Master Sword in the adult timeline from this event occurring. So logically, I feel the best explanation for what happened to the Master Sword in the adult timeline is that Princess Zelda kept it with her once she departed the hero back to his time. After relocating the Hyrulean royal family to Lake Hylia to rebuild Hyrule Castle, a special shrine was created underneath the castle dedicated to the legendary blade. This shrine would be the new resting spot for the Master Sword, as the Temple of Time was completely abandoned from the migration to Lake Hylia. Years passed, and the Hero of Time slips into a legend. As the prologue to the Wind Waker states, Ganon returns, but the hero does not. Ganon kills the two sages from the Wind and Earth Temples to cause the Master Sword to lose power. The gods then flooded Hyrule to prevent Ganon from ruling this sacred land. The gods then knew that they needed a hero to come and save Hyrule from the reign of Ganon that almost happened. They froze Hyrule in time under the waves of the sea and linked the spell to the Master Sword. That way, once a hero worthy of the sword came guided by the King of Hyrule himself, the hero would be equipped with the Master Sword and a fighting chance for Hyrule would come once again. However, due to the sword losing its sacred anti evil powers, Link was able to wield it despite not being truly worthy of the sword. It wasn't until Link awakened the reincarnations of the sages Medley and Makar to refuel the Master Sword with the power to vanquish evil alongside collecting the missing pieces to the Triforce of Courage that Link was truly blessed with the ability to wield the Master Sword at its full strength despite never aging. Next up is Twilight Princess. 
Obviously, Link in Twilight Princess was old enough to wield the Master Sword, which made withdrawing the sword pretty anti-consequential. Link possesses the Triforce of Courage, as we can see the symbolic Triforce on Link's hand in the beginning of the game when he's wearing his Ordon clothing. Link also gained the ability to transform into a wolf anytime he wanted. The power of the Master Sword pushed the shape-shifting stone of Twilight out of Link and was taken into custody by Midna. Link didn't even have to do much to gain access to the sword. As a wolf, Link howled Zelda's lullaby to awaken ancient guardians. All they ask of Link is to solve a tricky puzzle, and access to the Blade of Evil's Bane is granted. Unrelated, but it's rather interesting that since Twilight Princess takes place within the child timeline, it means the Master Sword hadn't been wielded since its origin in Skyward Sword. Speaking of Skyward Sword, let's discuss Skyward Sword Link's ability to wield the Master Sword. He is again of age right off the bat to wield the blade. Heck, the blade doesn't even exist until near the end of the game when Link retrieves the final flame from Din to upgrade the Goddess White Sword into the Master Sword. Through trials and dungeon crawling, Link honed his spirit along his trusty blade in order to claim the Triforce later on. Zelda, the goddess Hylia reborn, blessed Link's blade with the power to repel evil and in doing so revealed the sword's true form, making only Link worthy to wield it. Next up, we're going to talk about the Fallen Timeline games, A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds. Since both games share the same world and same basic method of acquiring the Master Sword, what I am going to talk about applies to both games respectively. For Link to get the sword that seals the darkness within these games, Link just has to collect the three pendants of power, wisdom, and courage. Link appears to be of age to wield the blade as well, based off of the promotional art. That's it for these games. Pretty short and sweet, right? There is one key thing I'd like to mention before moving on, and that key thing is that excluding the Wind Waker, the Master Sword is resting within the pedestal of time. In Skyward Sword, Link rests the sword into a pedestal at the end of the game, which becomes the pedestal of time as the sealed temple is rebuilt into the Temple of Time. The Temple of Time exists throughout Ocarina of Time, obviously, and within A Link Between Worlds, A Link to the Past, and Twilight Princess, the Temple of Time has decayed away. Eaten by the forest, the temple remains in ruins, with the pedestal of time being the only clearly defined portion of the temple left. With all that behind us, only one game remains, and that game is Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, it gets a little interesting, as the situation is very different compared to the rest of the Zelda games. This Link is once again obviously old enough to wield the sword, as he doesn't appear as a small child like Young Link or Link from the Wind Waker. In Breath of the Wild, the Master Sword does not rest within the Pedestal of Time, but a pedestal founded at the foot of the Great Deku Tree in Korok Forest. The pedestal itself looks rather organic, and nothing seems artificial other than the triangular carvings of the pedestal. It is also unknown if Link possesses the Triforce of Courage in Breath of the Wild, as Zelda does reveal power of the Triforce during the segment in which she saves Link from death. Link, however, already was wielding the Master Sword during the pre-100 years time gap. What I can say about this is that Link used to have the strength to wield the power of the Master Sword, hence why he did. After Link awakens from the Shrine of Resurrection, he has to visit lots of shrines and increase his strength and stamina using spirit orbs in order to reclaim the Master Sword. As of awakening from the Shrine of Resurrection, Link does not hone the strength of the Master Sword anymore. He must get at least 13 Hearts of Health in order to have the inner strength to withdraw the Master Sword from its pedestal once again. It's rather interesting though, as the Temple of Time still stands within Breath of the Wild, but only holds a statue of the Goddess Hylia within, with no sign of the Pedestal of Time, nor the Door of Time within it. That however, is a topic that will be discussed in the future. So there you have it! 
Young Link's situation in withdrawing the Master Sword was a rather specific situation for him to be sealed away. Luckily, it all worked out in the end. Well, that is, except for the Fallen Timeline. Anyways, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on this topic? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on the video, and if you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification for all upcoming uploads in the future. In the description, you can find links to all my socials, including Twitter and Instagram, as well as my Discord. I've also got a Patreon link as well if you're interested in supporting the channel. That's all for me, so once again, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Hylian Luke, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!